If you still don't know these three differentiation rules, it's not looking good, mate. But I'm gonna re-revise it with you and apply it to some tough questions. So the first one is the chain rule. How do we differentiate something like y equals two to the power of root x? Now, this is what, well, it looks like quite a tricky problem at the beginning, but one thing's for sure is all of my year 13s would find this super easy. But let me show you the idea behind uh, this problem and what even is the chain rule. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to let u equal that power of root x. Because what that does is it rewrites this as something which we should know what, what it differentiates to. And that'll be two to the power of u, right? So we have y is two to the power of u. What we're gonna do is we're gonna differentiate these separately. Here, we're gonna have du by dx. Now that's x to the power of a half. So we bring down the half, then we knock one off the power. So power half minus one is minus a half. Then we're gonna differentiate this with respect to u. Now all exponentials differentiate to themselves. e to the x differentiates to e to the x. So two to the u will differentiate to two to the u. But we have to multiply by ln of the base. Now that actually works with e as well, but ln of e is just one. So that's why e to the x goes to e to the x. Now, very quickly, I can prove that to you guys. Why is that the case? If I have y equals two to the x, I can rewrite that. And this proof they can actually ask you in the exam. This is a bonus part of the video, I guess. You're gonna rewrite as e to the power of ln of two to the power of x. Now the x can actually come down here. So we get this. Now we can differentiate this. dy by dx would be, you differentiate the power first. Remember ln two is just a number. It's like saying two x. 2x differentiates to 2. So x ln 2, the x just goes, we're left with ln 2. That comes down, e stays the same. But remember, this is just the same as this, so we're left with ln 2, lots of, lots of 2 to the x, which is this. It's just there we were dealing with u. Okay, so that's me proving everything that I kind of use here, mate. Now, the next thing is, how do we use this to get dy by dx. This is the chain rule. People think the chain rule is bring down the power, knock one off the power. That is not the chain rule. That's uh, the chain rule applied to a power function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these next to each other. So I have dy by du and I have du by dx. What do you do to these two to get dy by dx? You multiply them because then the du's cancel. So we're left with this multiplied by this. So I'm gonna get a half, x to the minus half. Now that minus, I'm gonna bring down. So I get one over two, one over two, x to the power of a half. Yeah, if that's in the denominator, it'll be x power of a half, which I'm gonna write as root x. Then I'm gonna multiply that by this, okay? But two to the power of u, remember u was, root x, which is here. And that is our answer, okay? And that's the chain rule process. Now this is something you could have done without doing all this business. All you're doing is you're saying, all right, I need to differentiate this function. I'm gonna differentiate the power first, differentiate the power, then two to the power of whatever differentiates to itself, ln two. So you could have got the answer straight away. I think at the beginning, it's important you guys understand what's going on so you can then keep applying uh, the quick process over and over again. All right, so that's the chain rule. Let's take a look at the product rule. Next one, product rule. Product indicating multiplication. So we have y equals this function times this function. Now one thing I think we should break the habit of is setting u and v to be all of this stuff. Mate, ain't nobody got time for that. We're just gonna go straight into it. To do the product rule, you differentiate the first term times the second, then you differentiate the second term times the first. So we differentiate the first term. To differentiate this, we're gonna apply the chain rule. So we differentiate what's inside the bracket first, which is three times, bring down the power, knock one off the power, which would be minus half. I call this a pavan function or a power function. 
So you differentiate the first term times the second plus differentiate the second term. So we're going to apply the same process. Differentiate what's inside. 2 multiplied by, bring down the power. And then we knock one off the power. Okay? And then you times it by the first term, which is 3x plus 1 to the power of a half. Now, in the exam, most likely they would not allow you to just leave your answer like this. We've got to think about factorizing things. So, the first thing I notice is that the 2 actually cancels that 2. I need to think about factorizing out numbers first. Okay, so this is minus 1. This is 3 over 2. I'm going to factorize out a half. Okay, so we think about the denominators first. Now, in terms of the numerators, 3 and 1, nothing can be factorized there. So, this is actually the hardest part of the problem is the factorizing. So I'm going to take out a half, yeah, and uh, my students already know, you know, uh, about some of the questions I've given them. If you guys are actually interested in my full courses, then check the link in the description. So the next thing we're going to think about is factorizing the 3x plus 1s. Now you're always factorizing the smaller denominator, uh, the smaller power, because you guys know this, like if you have x to the 5 plus x squared, you factorize out x squared, right? So you're always factorizing the smallest power. So I'll be x, well, this to the power of minus a half. Okay? In terms of this, again, we're going to factorize the minus half. What's going to be left? I took out a half. So I took out the half. I'm left with 3. I actually know, my bad, that power is actually smaller. So it's actually 3 over 2. Uh, where was I? I took out this. Okay, that's gone. Now, when you factorize, in fact, I probably didn't need to rub this out. Remember this example? When you take out the x squared, you get x cubed, right? Because you're doing x to the power of 5 divided by this. Then you get 1. x squared divided by this is 1. So, when you factorize this out, you're doing this divided by this, which means we then subtract the powers. We're doing minus a half minus minus 3 over 2, which becomes minus a half plus 3 over 2, which is 1, okay? So we're going to be left with this to the power of 1. That looks super clean. Then we have minus. Remember, we took out a half, okay? In fact, had I not cancelled this, I could have just said the half is gone and I'm left with 2, okay? Now, I took out this, but I'm left, I have this, right? So remember, we're dividing. We're going to do this divided by this, which means subtract the powers. A half minus minus a half is 1. So we get 3x plus 1 to the power of 1, which I don't need to write that. Remember this, we took out. And this is now looking super clean. So I can expand this. I get 6x uh, minus 3 minus... Whoa, this is turning out to be really clean. I didn't even realize that. I'm just doing this on the spot. Uh, one minute, uh, minus 6x, minus 2. Ah, I mean, I wish it wasn't all negative, but anyway. So that cancels. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's plus 1. Making sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's minus 5. How do I make this even cleaner? I don't think I can. Obviously, you can write this all on one line. These being negative powers, we could put them in the denominator. I guess the cleanest way to write this would be minus 5 all over 2 in the denominator. And both of these can go in the denominator. We'd get 3x plus 1 to the power of a half, which you could write as a root. But because we're not going to write this one as a root, I don't think you should. And that is the product rule. Let's take a look at the quotient rule. The last one is the quotient rule. Quotient meaning division. And again, guys, we ain't using using these. I ain't got time for that. So how does the quotient rule work? It's actually basically the same layout as product rule. Remember product rule? Product rule when differentiate first term times second, differentiate second times first, we're going to do the same thing. But it's just top, bottom, top, bottom. Differentiate the top times the bottom, differentiate the bottom times the top. It's just divided by the bottom squared, because it's a fraction. Okay, so we're going to differentiate the top. Sec differentiates to sec x, tan x. 
times the bottom. Now, because I know I'm going to have to differentiate this, I'm going to rewrite it slightly. I'm going to write it as sine x all squared. You're going to rewrite this as a power function, a pavan function, minus. So what do I do? Differentiate top times bottom, differentiate bottom times the top. So I'm going to differentiate this, but I'm just going to look at this instead. Tricks in it. So differentiating this, we're going to differentiate what's inside the bracket first. Sine differentiates to cos. Then we bring down the power, and then we knock one off the power. OK, there we go. OK? So we differentiate the top times the bottom minus differentiate the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. Sine squared x all squared is sine to the power 4x. Now we just need to clean everything up. Now you don't need to clean up too much here. I'm just showing you guys what the rules are. But something I see straight away is that cos times sec cancel because sec is 1 over cos. So we have 2 sine x. We have sine squared x, which actually should start cancelling with the sine to the power of 4 in the denominator. So how much would cancel? Well, sine x to the power of 1, a sine x from here. We're just dividing every term by sine x. And this would end up being cubed. OK? And tan is sine over cos. I don't really think there's much more, to be honest, to do there. Um, yeah, I don't think I would really do much. That's sine over cos times that. You could write that as sine squared over cos squared. Maybe remove the, the fractions. But in general, I'm not too fussed about it. So I'm just going to leave it like this. So we have sec x, tan x times sine x minus 2 all over uh, sine cubed, yeah? Now, if there was another way, if you guys wanted to, like I said, I'll just do it anyway. So sec is 1 over cos, tan is sine over cos, so those would give you sine over cos squared, which you times by sine would be sine squared x over cos squared x, uh, minus 2 all over sine cubed. Then what we could do here is scale this. So I take the top and the bottom. Very common technique that I teach my year 13s is we're going to times top and bottom by cos squared to get rid of denominators. So when you expand that in, you're left with sine squared minus 2 cos squared all over sine cubed cos squared. I'll write the cos squared first just because it's a smaller uh, smaller uh, power. And that's that. But I'm curious, which one would you guys have chosen? Obviously, if the exam didn't ask you, this one or this one, which, you, which one do you guys think looks cleaner? I'll leave that up to you. But yeah, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you're subscribed and like the video for more. I'm going to be producing a ton more content on YouTube. And if you're interested in my full maths courses, then check the link in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one. Nice.